The Victorian has been operating for 50 years now, but how did this line come into existence? The Victoria Line is the second most recent tube line, only beaten by the Jubilee Line 10 years later, and was the first tube line to be constructed in London for over 60 years since the Piccadilly in 1906. Because the line was built from scratch and did not take over any other lines, it could be far more future-proofed. The plan for a line going from Walthamstow to Victoria had been suggested all the way back in 1948 by the British Transport Commission. This plan mainly followed plans suggested in 1946 for a Croydon to Finsbury Park line. The plan was presented to the House of Parliament in 1955 for a line going between Victoria and Walthamstow Wood Street. Walthamstow Wood Street Station is to the north of Walthamstow Central and is currently served by the London Overground. There was a proposal as well for building an extension to Fulham Broadway Station on the district line. However, this was not presented to Parliament, so the permission was not given for it. The name Victoria Line has references back to 1955, but other suggestions for the name of the line were the Woolvick Line, referencing the fact that the line went from Walthamstow to Victoria or the Viking Line, referencing that the line went from Victoria to King's Cross. However, the name Victoria Line was chosen after Victoria Station. Construction began in 1952 between Walthamstow Central and Victoria. The section between Walthamstow Central and Walthamstow Wood Street had been dropped from the plan in 1961. The line had been planned to surface between Walthamstow Central and Walthamstow Wood Street, then the line would have terminated next to the British Rail platforms. In 1967, Parliament gave approval for an extension from Victoria to Brixton. One year later, the plan for a station at Pimlico was approved. The line was opened in multiple stages. This was likely done to allow the completed section of the line to bring in revenue while the rest of the line was being completed. The first section of line between Walthamstow Central and Highbury and Islington opened on the 1st of September 1968. In December 1968, the second section of the line between Highbury and Islington and Warner Street was opened. Then, on the 7th of March 1969, the final section of the original proposal opened between Warren Street and Victoria. The Queen opened the line by buying a five pence ticket and travelling in the cab of one of the trains between Green Park and Oxford Circus. Then she made the return journey in the carriage. Finally, she unveiled a plaque at Victoria Station commemorating the opening of the line. The Brixton extension was not part of the original plan for the line, as the line was meant to curve the other way and go towards Fulham Broadway. The extension to Brixton was approved by the Houses of Parliament in August 1971 and was opened by Princess Alexandra on the 23rd of July 1971. She made a journey from Brixton to Vauxhall. The Duke of Edinburgh and the Prince of Wales had visited the extension while it was under construction. When the line between Walthamstow and Victoria opened, each station was shown as an interchange, apart from Blackhorse Road. This station should have had an interchange, because the station was on the Kentish Town to Barking line of British Rail. But this line was due to be closed in the beaching axis. The Kentish Town to Barking line did not get axed, and therefore Black Horse Road got a connection. Later, the line became the Gospel Oak to Barking line of the London Overground. Then, when the Brixton extension was opened, the line continued to have all its station with interchanges. This was broken when Pimlico opened, as this station does not have any interchanges. To allow these interchanges to be as seamless as possible for commuters, many of the stations were reconfigured. 
For example, here at Finsbury Park, the northbound Victoria Line took over the southbound Piccadilly Line platforms. This meant that the southbound Piccadilly and the southbound Victoria had to have new platforms. But these took over the northern city line platforms to put the tube close together and the northern city line was moved to new platforms. By doing the interchange this way, commuters that were coming into London on the Piccadilly line, whose destinations were on the Victoria line, would be able to have a quicker interchange instead of having to walk long corridors. This is the same for commuters coming on the Victoria line and changing to the Piccadilly. The line's stations are not quite as deep as the rest of the line because the stations use a humpback design. This means as the train is entering the station, they go up an incline. This means they can slow down using gravity because the train transfers some of its kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy. This slows the train. It also needs to break to come to a complete stop when it gets onto the flat platform sections. As the train leaves the station, it goes down an incline. This allows them to use that stored gravitational potential energy to accelerate by transferring it into kinetic energy. The train still needs to use some power to get the train off the point where gravity takes over, but it means the train needs to use less power to get up to operating speed. This provides an energy saving of 5%. Also, the line was constructed with larger tunnels to reduce air resistance because the air has somewhere to go when the train has hit it. For the 50 years that it's been running, the Victoria Line has only had two types of rolling stock. The first type was the 1967 stock. 39 and a half of these eight car trains entered service. They were futuristic trains because they were essentially self-driving. These trains are compatible with the newer 1972 stock. This does mean that the potentially 1967 stock parts still in operation on the underground. These trains were replaced over 40 years later with the 2009 stock. These trains have better acceleration and deceleration. This allows the trains to be faster than the older stock. The trains run the London Underground's highest trains per hour at 36. This is a train every about 90 to 120 seconds. All trains on the Victoria Line used automatic train operation. The original system used pulses of current through the rails to determine the speed that the train could go. If the train detected 420 pulses per second, the train was allowed to go full speed. 270 and 180 pulses per second allowed the train to do 25 miles an hour, but they have different braking restrictions. 120 pulses per second was not detectable by the train, and therefore the train believed that it is run over a stop signal. This original system is not in use anymore, as simpler and more accurate systems are now in place. The new ATO system uses distance to go radio. Distance to go radio uses a system of radio transmitters on the track side. This means the trains know how far along the track they are. This then communicates this information back to the main control room and then back to the radio transmitter to tell the next train that passes how far ahead the next train is. To operate the train, the driver closes the doors and presses two buttons at the same time to begin the train's movement. The train will then drive itself to the next station and will stop and open the doors to allow passengers off. The driver has to press two buttons because it is a safety method. The driver cannot accidentally press a button and the train start moving. As mentioned earlier, the Victoria Line runs one of the most frequent services on the underground. A train is timetabled to stop at any of the call section stations every 90 to 100 seconds. During off-peak hours, the trains are reduced to about 25 trains per hour, as not all need to be in service. During the night tube, the Victoria Line runs a train every 10 minutes on Friday and Saturday evenings. The Victoria Line is an OK line for step-free access. All stations have a raised path to the platform that allows for passengers to get from the train onto the platform more easily, where there is not a large step down from the train. The only station that does not have this is Pimlico.
All stations on the Victoria Line were originally tiled in blue and grey. Each station has a tile motif. During the construction of the Jubilee Line, the tiles at Green Park Station were replaced by ones to match the Jubilee Line. But in 2009, the tiles were replaced by replicas of the original tiles. Here are each of the tile motifs and what they represent. The first is Brixton. This station's tile motif is one of the most obvious. It's just a ton of bricks. Also, Brixton is the home of the largest roundel on the underground. The next is Stockwell. The tile motif is less clear unless you know what is outside the station. The tile motif is a swan. This is because the swan pub is outside the station. Also at Stockwell is one of the deep level shelter entrances. Next up is Vauxhall. The tile motif here is a representation of what I can only assume is the railing at the old Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. Pimlico's motif is one of the simplest. It represents the modern art that is on display at Tate Britain Gallery, which is near the station. The next is another obvious design. Victoria Station has a side portrait of the Queen that the station is named after. Also at Victoria Station, there is the new entrance at Cardinal Place. If you lead the station through this entrance, there is a ventilation shaft to the left of the building. It is not clear though that this is a ventilation shaft, because it has been turned into a sort of piece of art. The next station is Green Park. The tile motifs are not the original ones, but they are now replicas, and the tile motif is an overhead shot of the park with the trees and the lake. Oxford Circus has the most useful tile motif because it shows the three lines that go through the station. The next station is Warren Street. This is the most fun of the tile motifs because it is a maze. So if you have some time, go to Warren Street and try and solve it. Euston has a historical motif. It shows the old arch that used to be the entrance to the station when it first opened. The arch was deconstructed in the 1960s after over 120 years of standing at the entrance. King's Cross St Pancras has another one of the obvious motifs. It's some crowns in the shape of a cross. Highbury and Islington shows the castle that used to be in the area. This is because the name Highbury comes from the words for a manor on high ground. The manor on the high ground is the one in the motif. Next up is Finsbury Park. This motif shows two pistols. This is in reference to the duels that would happen in Finsbury Park when it was outside of the boundary of London. Also at Finsbury Park, there are mosaics of hot air balloons. Many people think this is because the first hot air balloon flight happened at Finsbury Park, but really it took place at Finsbury Fields, just north of Moorgate and the Square Mile. The next station up the line is Seven Sisters. The tar motif is of the seven elm trees that were planted in the area, where Seven Sisters gets its name. Next is Tottenham Hale. This shows an old ferry on the River Lee, which passes near the station. Black Horse Road Station is the last easy one to get, as it's just a black horse. There is also Black Horse artwork outside the station. Finally, there is Walthamstow Central. This is an adaptation of William Morris's work. He was an artist from Walthamstow. This brings us on to the fact that all Victoria Line stations have two platforms, one for northbound and one for southbound. There are three exceptions to this. The first is Walthamstow Central. This station has two platforms for southbound because it's the terminus. The other is Brixton. This has two northbound platforms for the same reason. The final station is Seven Sisters. One northbound, one southbound, and then the third platform is a terminating platform where the trains stop when they're going to go to the depot. The depot for the Victoria Line is based at Northumberland Park. There is a great Londonist video about the depot, so I'll link it in the video description. A brief overview of the depot is that it is accessed by trains from a third platform at Seven Sisters. It opened in 1968 when the first stage of the Victoria Line opened. The depot was expanded in the late 2000s, ready for the newer trains. The line is becoming more crowded, which poses a risk to passenger safety. Platform edge doors may help, but it would be a costly feature as it would affect the design of future trains because they'd have to match the door spacing, unless the platform edge doors were changed. The other alternative would be Crossrail 2. The current plan seems the line going from the north of London 
through Tottenham, stopping at Seven Sisters and Tottenham Hale, and then through to Euston and Victoria, and then on to the south of London. This would mean that Crossrail 2 relieved the stress that the Victoria Line is under. Thanks for watching this video on the Victoria Line. My aim is to do one of these videos for each line, as they give some history and then the current stage of the line, and for some lines, the future.